Yo guys, what's up and welcome back to the Marvelous Chats podcast. This is episode 122. Tonight on the cast is myself, Finto, and I'm going to be interviewing Irish movie critic Sean Talks Movies. So without further ado, here we go. Yo, Sean, what's up, dude? How are you? Hello, man. I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, for Thanks anybody for who doesn't me, know, man. yeah, of course, of course. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, um, why don't you just drop your links, maybe introduce yourself. I know you've, your name is up on the screen here for anybody who might be watching this. But we also are on uh, Spotify and stuff, so people might be listening. So maybe just uh, give a quick introduction and maybe shout out your uh, your URLs and stuff. Yeah, class, man. Um, so my name is Sean um, and I have a movie page called Sean Talks Movies. Uh, I started it this time last year. So I'm, I'm coming up to my year anniversary of doing this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I, I mostly operate on TikTok and Instagram. I also do YouTube, but um, TikTok is really where I live and breathe for this channel. Uh, I post a lot of movie reviews, movie news, um, and just kind of like one of the things that I think possibly I could be wrong, but I think that you came and seen my page was the Dublin Cinema Leaderboard. And um, that is kind of where I've been known for. And I'm, I'm obviously I'm still quite small, but um, I grew a lot from that where I go around to different uh, Dublin cinemas and I review them and put them on the leaderboard, which is very controversial because some people have some cinemas that they absolutely adore in their hearts. And when they don't see a top of the list, they come at me, but um, that's that's a very fun <laughs> series that I that I'm doing, and um, yeah, that's that's kind of it. I just kind of live and breathe movies, and um, I love talking about them. So that's why I'm really glad that I'm on here today to be able to to chat to yourself. Yeah, so uh, I was going to talk about this, but that's how I did come across your page. So I was on TikTok, I saw one of your movie re- uh, cinema reviews. And I said to myself, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, cause you do them well and your narration is very good. And thank you. Thank you. I live, for, I, we're both from Dublin. So I'm, I can't remember what cinema I saw first. It might've been Liffey Valley or something, but I've been nice to all these idea. cinemas myself. So I'm kind of like, I'm, I was very kind of roped in straight away. Cause I'm like, I'm from Dublin. These are all the cinemas I go to as well. Let's see how he's ranking them. Let's see how he's actually, <laughs> what your viewing experience is like. So I can't remember which one I saw first, but then I remember I was pretty early on. I think you'd only been to like three or four. Um, and then I remember, because I remember one of the first comments I ever said to you is, I can't wait for your review of Blanchardstown. And because that's like my go to, that's You're my number mad. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but funny story for anybody who doesn't know. Um, by the time you came around to going to Blanche, if I remember correctly, you weren't in the IMAX screen. You went to like a no. smaller screen for some, some smaller movie. And I remember yeah. you put Blanche like way down your list. And I got on to you straight away and I was like, man, you need to go back to Blanche because you missed out because you didn't go to screen nine. It's all about screen nine. Screen yeah. one is also very good. Like the ice screen is great, but it is all about screen nine. Screen nine is and just... Now, and after you telling me that, where did it take Blanche? Right to the yeah. very top. It's at yeah, the very top right now. To um, be honest, if, yeah. if you if you ever find a cinema or a screen that's better than that screen nine in Blanche, let me know straight away. I'm sure I'll see the video. But I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not going to. I don't to. think so. I, think so. I, I don't think, think so either, but... But but I pre I appreciate you a lot because you um I I actually remember that first time that you commented on on one of my videos as well and I thank you just to start this off thank you very much for supporting me because um I have noticed you and I have known you for very early days into my into my page and I appreciate all the the comments and support that you dropped for me and if it wasn't for you I wouldn't have went back to I to to Blanche and put that on go. the top and there um I have to shout you out because I actually went back to to Blanche after I filmed that IMAX video. And yeah. I, I, I'm going to sound like a, a stuck up person here. I don't mean to be, but I walked in and all the staff just stared at me and they were like, oh shit. And I went <laughs> up to get, I went up to get my popcorn and they were like, are you, are you Sean Hawks movies? And I was like, yeah, what? Like, what? And they all knew me. And I was like, I feel like yeah. a superstar, but it's that's very class. niche, very niche yeah. people that know me. Other people don't, but. um, Well, that's but, their yeah. business, I suppose. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. And I guess like, you know, people like yourself as well, like that's, these are the chats that I love to have because I yeah. think, I think it's quite weird, actually. I think there's, there's not many like Irish movie creators that do this. There's a lot in the UK and there's a lot in, in the US and stuff, but yeah. um, I think that's kind of why people were kind of looking for, for someone to do this sort of stuff. And I'm I'm kind of glad that I was able to do that, but yeah, it's just a lot of fun on my end too. Like I don't really, I don't want too much out of it other than just being able to speak to my yeah. camera and just upload it and just kind of get those thoughts out because my friends are sick of me talking about movies i'll drag <laughs> them to go and see something and they're yeah. like all right sean relax we've done and seen it stop talking about it i'm like no i need yeah. to i need to speak about it i need to get it out so 
yeah. it's kind of why this all started. They they sound like my girlfriend as well. Like you know, I had to kind of start a podcast because I would just nerd out so much about all the new stuff that was coming out <laughs> that like my girlfriend's like, I don't care about that, but like I don't care about going that deep into it. So yeah, it was you know, just funny. you gotta you gotta be able to let it out. And now look where you are. Yes, yeah. amazing exactly. podcast and amazing exactly. setup. By the way, your setup is Thank you, like I'm geeking out at that Captain America <laughs> shield that I can see in the background right now. Yeah, that's a pillow. Pops. That's a couch pillow. <laughs> Oh, that's insane. It still looks yeah. bloody epic. Uh, so like yeah. just a quick, quick kind of um, history lesson for anybody who doesn't know, like I, I, I started out streaming on Twitch. So and that's why my name is Finto. My real name obviously isn't Finto, but that's my gamer tag. So when the podcast started, we, we this is like the 122nd episode of the podcast. So when we actually started doing this it was because me and a couple of my streamer mates over on Twitch all wanted to kind of just sit down and talk about the finale of WandaVision. Because you, you, you were obviously into it back then, but Big the time. hype, the hype around WandaVision was something that we, I don't think the fan base had ever seen in Marvel. Like, like Never. all of the conspiracies, all of the uh, Mephisto talk, everything like, you know, the Ralph Boner stuff, everything that was going on during that show, just like, I was just, absolutely engrossed every week it was like i'd watch the episode and then i'd be straight onto youtube to watch all the breakdowns and see what i missed and everything and it was just yeah it was epic it was so good and that was was why that was why we started the podcast originally because i was like we got to sit down and talk about all this shit and it was like at the very start of disney plus so we didn't really know and again i'll talk to you about this a little later on in the episode but like i'm just curious like your kind of views on a lot of the stuff but when it started it was just like you know the MCU was like at its peak, you know, end game. It just happened. Yeah. And then we heard that Disney plus was coming out and it was like, Oh my God, we're getting shows now. I was like, Holy crap. Like this is amazing. We're going to get shows. And then like, obviously WandaVision had its ups and downs. Falcon, the winter soldier came out. It wasn't amazing, but again, it had a few ups and downs, but then the show started kind of getting worse. And now the MCU is in a bit of a different place than it was at the end of end game. But like I, I just I needed to do a podcast because I needed to just talk about this stuff because again I felt so sorry for my girlfriend because we'd be sitting watching these shows and I'd be breaking it down in front of her and she'd just be like oh you're going way too deep for me like so you know again it's but not dude. a massive it's not a massive podcast but we do have people from all over the world listening in and it's 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 a cool achievement to have like you know well I I for one I'm very glad that you made the podcast and especially now hearing the origins came from one division one of the yeah. absolute peak peak mcu shows i was the exact same as you bro i literally i remember every single it came out on a friday didn't it when it yeah. when it first launched and every yeah. friday after the episode i was straight on to see the theories and i don't think any other mcu show except for wandavision has had that amount of like conspiracy theories what's going to happen oh, what's yeah. happening here what, what's next and i just think such a refreshing show that like mm you go back and watch it again and again and it just hits the same every single time it's just it's just so good and i don't think really think other shows other than maybe loki and i'm a big moon knight fan you can probably see it there Um, and loki moon knight like those ones are up there um but wandavision just holds a special place in my heart for sure yeah i wasn't crazy on the first like two or three episodes it's just not my style of like comedy you know like again one of our co-hosts alex kind of grew up like watching those shows when he was a kid and for me i just that was lost on me like but then when they started kind of coming to the present day and you found out about the hex and stuff i was like okay here we go it's 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 building up now it's building up it's great and then obviously you know with it leading into dr strange and all that sort of stuff it was great and i think I don't know how you feel about this, but I definitely feel that connective tissue has been such an important part of the MCU up until now. And now for some reason in like phase four and five, and I kind of understand phase four was maybe a little bit of a kind of, you know, not to say reboot, but a a chance to bring in new characters and to start origin stories again. So I can kind of understand a little bit why there was no um, connective tissue. But when it comes to characters that were already in the MCU, like Wanda, for example, you know, I know I don't know how to the ear, like how how like you your ear to the ground is on like rumors and leaks and stuff like that. But I, I'm very oh, mate, much, I'm so tuned I'm in. Deep. Like yeah, I'm deep. I, I one thing that I I always try to to I always end up alluding to, but I don't really dive into it is how much of an absolute massive Marvel fan I actually am. I literally yeah. I actually did my final year thesis in college on how the MCU is connected. I swear oh, wow. to God. Now I got I got an A, so that's, that's pretty epic. good. But like, <laughs> literally, I, I studied media and like yeah. I got the opportunity to. It was literally I was graduating in 2021, and it was when One Division released, and yeah. I was able to like write my thesis about how shows and movies are now going to be connected to each other and how that is like the new norm. But yeah, yeah, I mean, 
that is the one thing that I I feel is the biggest problem in the MCU. People are like, no one cares about this character. Yeah, they do care about that character, but mm. you need to connect it better into yeah. everything else that's going on. I don't mind watching every single show and every single movie if I know I'm going to get like something out of it that I know yeah. it's building towards something. And 100%. I think that is the biggest problem that they've had at this minute is that you, I, I'm not seeing any build up to the Kang Dynasty. That well, if is it still going to be the Kang Dynasty? I don't know, but that's coming out in not. like two years time, and yeah. they have a lot of built like footwork to build up to that. And the hours that we've watched of shows and movies has been more than the Infinity Saga, and yet we're still at a place that no one really knows what's where's the interconnectivity. I need to see more of it. So I yeah. think. That is what they, they're going to need to tune into to get people back in because that, as you said, that is what won so many people over is seeing yeah. these characters that, you know, you see them in a movie and then one year later, they're making a cameo. Now, I know a yeah. lot of people are going to be like, it's not all about cameos, but it, it kind it of is. Though. Part. <laughs> it it, it is. kind of is. Yeah, it is. It's a very important part to that interconnectivity to, to know that all these characters are in their own shared universe. Like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you here and I'm looking, I'm like, when are we going to see Werewolf by Night? You know, when are we going to yeah. see Black Panther? When are we going to see yeah. Moon Knight? But yeah. these characters, like Miss Marvel, obviously we've seen, but like, when are these characters actually going to reappear again? And yeah, I do hope that new approach that they're taking to um, quality over quantity. I do hope mm-hmm. that that kind of brings it back down to earth. But yeah, I don't know, man. I think this year, this year is tough. I don't know if you agree with this. This might be, this might be one that's really good to talk about, but. This year we have three Sony Marvel movies. We've got Madam Web, we've got Qu- Craven the Hunter, and Venom Three. And we only have mm-hmm. one MCU movie. And like normal viewers are going to just think that these are all full on Marvel yeah. movies. But yeah, like that that might damage people even more. That they're like, what yeah. is this? Like Madam Web's apparently in two thousand and three, yeah. and it's a standalone movie. Like people will go into that expecting to see Spider Man, and yeah. they're just it's going to happen regardless yeah. of of what people think and they don't people are going to go into that thing and spider-man's there and when it doesn't happen they're going to be like oh marvel fucked up again it's it's just weird it's just it's a tough situation so it is it is and like i think you know for the the normies as i like to call them like the people who aren't like normies (laughs) deep deep in on the on the lore like again you're you're absolutely right they're going to see a madam web movie now you know people who don't who know nothing about it might not even link it to spider-man because they won't know but people who know a little bit will be like where's spider-man and I had yeah. heard that Sony tried to put Andrew Garfield in that movie, but then Apparently not even so. re- not even realizing themselves that it was set in 2003 and what Andrew oh would have been, Andrew's character would have been like, what, eight years old or something. And then they were yeah, like, oh, we're right. going to try to get Tom Holland in. It's like, was he even born? <laughs> like, it's, it's, just, they're not even, they're not thinking like. How just, can they, how yeah. can they consistently keep messing up yeah, on, in crazy. the Sony universe? Like, you know, I'm a big Venom fan. I love the character. Like, you know, let there be carnage. I don't really know what to say about that movie other than it was okay. And Venom (laughs) one was like, okay, but they've not been exceptional. You know, Venom three, I am really excited for, I'm not going to lie. Craven being rated or like, I'm excited for that, but I just, I don't think those three movies are going to do the MCU any justice because, you know, Deadpool three, it's all hinged on Deadpool three. And I hope that that is the turning stage because yeah. I would predict that it would make over a billion. I, I feel like it easy. will. I think um, it will easily. But yeah, I, I mean, like hopefully if that ties into the TVA and we see cameos and we see kind of the, the Fox universe coming in a bit more, you know, obviously the Marvels, I think we can talk about it now. The Marvels um, post credit scene mm-hmm. um, with Monica going to the, to the Fox universe. And now we're going to yeah. see them again in Deadpool three. You know, that is nice because the Marvels was the last movie it ties into the Fox universe that comes in with Deadpool three. And I just hope that those consistent like ties in tie ins are, are what kind of strings it back together. But yeah, I am a, a little bit worried about the Sony Marvel movies kind of skewing people more this year into being like, Oh, Marvel's had three misses this year. And it's like, yes, Marvel has, but it's not Marvel studios. So, exactly, um, yeah. but they might not be misses. They might be, they might be hits, but um. In terms I, I, of, you yeah. know, all of that, I don't know. I think if you can if you can score some kind of sixes on IMDb out of ten with those movies, I think you're gonna win. And <laughs> I, I don't Massive really know. What, yeah, I don't really know what the budgets are, but if they can kind of break even box office yeah. wise, that's a win. Um, yeah. 
yeah like it's gonna be really interesting to see uh madam web like that one is that one i really i haven't heard a single person say that they're really really excited to see it now look i'm not gonna lie i'm i love marvel i love uh, comic book movies so i'm gonna go see it i'm gonna go see it on opening night and i my expectations are on the floor so yeah I probably will come out being like, I was pleasantly surprised. But yeah, um, I mean, yeah, as you said, if they even break even, that's going to be very, very good for them because yeah. I just I just think it comes at a really bad time. But um, let's just see. I guess that's all we can do is just wait and see. But I say Venom 3 will do well. Um, Craven, I'm sure will do okay. But yeah, I'm worried about Madam Web. That's, that's going to be a really interesting one to sit back and see kind of the numbers come in for that one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because like... <sighs> It's it's a it's a really tough one. Like I think that there's some good cast members in there. Dakota oh, Johnson yeah. and um Sydney Sweeney are two pretty big names in in Hollywood right now. So I think like even yeah. they'll get some people in. Absolutely. I don't think number one. I don't think it was a good idea that they released that on Valentine's Day. It's not a romantic movie. I don't think a lot of people are going to bring their girlfriends to go see that movie on Valentine's. I Day. mean. I mean, single <laughs> yeah. single men will go and see Sydney Sweeney on Valentine's Day. <laughs> they'll be lonely. They they'll want to go see and Sydney. I'm, yeah, I'm, fair I'm speaking from experience here, so <laughs> you know that's that is one yeah. pulling point that they have. You know, they've got they've got yeah. Sydney Sweeney and Dakota Johnson in superhero costumes on Valentine's Day. That's just yeah, that that might bring it in. Fair but yeah. but you know, I guess that is a factor. Like anyone but you, the the comedy that's done so well, and that might bring more people in to see Sydney Sweeney again. And she's on a roll yeah. right now. So true. I mean, she is one of the the brightest stars out of that movie that I'm really looking forward to see in particular. Um, and I mean, it could be it could be a, a sleeper hit. It really could. But um, and I hope it is because I don't I, I as I keep saying, I don't want it to skew people to to attack the MCU yeah. when Madame Web does bad. So I think um, yeah, it'd be interesting. But definitely a lot of people are gonna be going in expecting Spider Man. And if if yeah. there's no reference to Spider Man, I think people will have their pitchforks which is it do is you, annoying but do you know the story of the movie like do you know what the the plot is i've heard bits and pieces but um all of this kind of standalone 2003 stuff was quite new to me and then i've i've just been getting so confused about what is actually going on in that movie that i'm just like right i, I don't know do um, you want me to tell you? I, I would love for you to tell me okay so basically and it, if when you hear this it's actually it might excite you more so okay yeah, the, movie, the movie the movie is set Obviously, Madam Web, I don't know if you know her as a kind of a character, but like she's yeah. the original Madam Web kind of is outside of time and she kind of overlooks yeah. time and watches the Spider Verse. Um, and she obviously in this movie is, I don't know if it's actually that she's from that time or if she's actually come back in time, but she's able to okay. see the future basically. But there's the the main, um, the bad guy in the movie is from the future. He's coming back to that timeline because he wants to actually murder mary parker because she's pregnant with peter so peter isn't even born yet so (sighs) peter is technically in the movie so basically what they're doing is they're doing a terminator in the marvel universe so basically it's it's like a terminator kind of cool yeah it is kind of cool i did i did actually see isn't there isn't there an actor oh god his name is is gone he's he's meant to be ben parker i did see that he is he's in the trailers and it's like it's ben parker it didn't even cross my head yeah, Ben is in the movie. It's a young Ben. He's like an ambulance driver or something like that, or like a paramedic. Yeah. yeah. So the movie. Oh, okay. That's actually sick. It. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's kind of cool. Then you see that that kind of changes things because if people hear Aunt May and, and Uncle Ben mm-hmm. and they know, you know, if he's trying to stop Peter from being born or whatever, that yeah. is a cool premise. That is yeah. a cool premise. So I, I take I like... it that the, the spider women and Madam Web are trying to stop that from happening. Exactly, yeah. I think... Got you. I think Peter is like the spider totem, so if he's never born, yes. the rest of them can't get their powers sort of thing. It's kind of like Barry with the speed force in DC sort of thing. I'm not going to lie. Understa- that's, that's my understanding very... of it. Yeah. That's very cool. That is very cool. You see, I didn't I didn't know that point in particular. I knew that the, uh, the villain was from the future and he could kind of predict what their moves were going to be before they did it but i actually didn't piece that together that it was going to be be that and that's actually that has excited me a little bit more Um, yeah so fingers crossed it's cool fingers crossed they can pull it off but as i said when i originally heard that plot point now i heard that a while ago but when i heard that i was like okay this actually could be good but again you know and it's kind of in the in the fandom everybody kind of says you know sony's gonna sony so you know (laughs) (laughs) they're probably they're probably gonna do they're gonna trip themselves up most likely they probably will like no one else will do it for them they'll just do it for themselves and they'll just be like yeah. they'll just ruin it but i hope they don't because how many times can you keep making 
the same mistake over again before you actually learn that okay exactly. i need to just do something different i hope they do um and again like as i said this this is something that you know a lot of people you speak to are like i don't i actually do not care about madam web that it actually is better that way because they'll come out and they'll be like you know what i didn't care for that at all but i've just watched it it's actually pretty good yeah um I'm a sucker. Like, I, I know you watch my reviews. There's been some movies I've gone into and I've been like, I'm not excited for this. And I've come yeah. out and I've loved it. And then I've looked at my comment section and people are like, what are you saying? So <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling I'm yeah. going to be the person. You're going to see my review from Adam Webb and I'm going to yeah. be like, peak, peak cinema. <laughs> this, is, this is the best. A masterpiece. And <laughs> literally. And you'll be like, bro, yeah. calm down a little bit. But um, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to mention that down the line a little bit, but um on your page, your TikTok has actually blown up quite a bit since I first started following you. And you're starting to get like invites to premieres and stuff like that, which is great. That's yeah. really cool to see. Like I'm delighted for you. And um, I know you're at the you. salt, you were at the salt burn premiere and it looked like a really cool night, you know, cocktails and it was insane. It was in the it was insane. stellar, wasn't it? Or was Savoy? Yeah, or yeah it, was was it? In, it was in the, Sorry. it was in the Stella. It was in the Stella. Yeah. yeah. So um, big shout out to Warner brothers because they, they have been so, so nice to me. Um, one of the one of the girls there when I went to my first premiere, I was I was super nervous because I was yeah. like, I kind of felt like an outsider, you know, all these big massive influencers, and then I'm just there, like little old me loving movies, and um, they're like, oh my god, we've seen your page, and we we have to get you straight on the list. But um, I won't mention other studios, but I have they have seen my messages, and they haven't added me to the list yet. So I'm that fuels me even more to want to to get up. But yeah, yeah like I mean, that's really cool, dude. That's really I cool. started I, I started a year ago, and and like just compared to where I was then to now it's it's incredible so um hopefully I can I can keep growing and do you um, have any more premieres lined up can you say that or are you not allowed um, to talk about that I sort of thing I don't I act no if if I did I would say so I don't have any lined up at the minute but um since as I said I I am on the Warner Brothers list so I'm yeah. praying that they do a big Dune part two um that would be cool. premiere because that is one movie that I'm just so excited for and I feel like that would be a really big one but um I don't really think there's anything else coming out that that I'm on the list for. Hopefully that changes and you see a video and I'm like, come with me to vlog this <laughs> yeah. premiere like I usually do. But um, yeah. yeah, that's that's it. So that's kind of my goal, you know, like when yeah. I kind of started doing all this and I kind of started to grow a bit more. I don't want to be a superstar, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind getting a, a cheeky early invite to a movie like. Yeah. that's all i want you know that's i don't the dream, want bro. anything else that's it that's the that's dream it. like what we're sitting down doing here like if i could do that for a living i would be so happy and i know i know people that do this for a living you know so it's not out like not completely possible. out of reach yeah it's not impossible you know exactly. it, it, i think living in dublin it's not great because yeah. again when we're doing these live we do them at a uh, on a sunday night you know there's not a lot of, not a lot of people tuning in live uh, the vast majority of like my audience is u.s based for that reason alone and the u.s like pool is just so like over like ridden with just like so many different creators doing the exact same thing so yeah it's harder to get seen but i think you know when i do hit like the likes of the u.s market i think people see hear the accents and they're like oh this guy's from somewhere absolutely, exactly. absolutely so you know they, like, they people like oh, i love your accent oh my god you know, so literally I and i, I plus and minuses to it yeah and like i i honestly can't praise you enough because i've watched your clips and stuff on tiktok and um, with your co-host and i've i've loved the content that you do and like look even i said it to you before like this this layout and stuff is just absolutely incredible and i think you you have a really nice gem of a podcast going so definitely keep it up bro and i have absolutely full faith that one day um one day i'll be begging you to let me back on because <laughs> you'll be yeah. so famous you'll be having fucking <laughs> dakota johnson and sydney sweeney as guests just, instead of me i just don't even like again like it's so funny because like you know you see some people that kind of take a step into that sort of thing and I, I wouldn't even know where to start to get there but i honestly i'm having fun doing it um you know I, ga I game over on twitch and i've actually made it and not to brag or anything but i've made enough money off twitch to pay for my entire setup so i'm gaming oh, for free yes. and young me would like literally sit back and be like wow that's amazing that's the dream. Like, I, I get that's the dream. i get paid to play video games during the week you know what i mean and then Congrats. i have a job and all that sort of stuff in the real world so it's fine we're, we're like that's i don't dream, need, bro. you know a lot of people when they start doing stuff like this they don't have money like you know it's the grind they're chasing the dream and i think yeah. you know that might help people more you know you might be more motivated to actually do it but for me at Absolutely. least i know i don't have to fall back on it and that part really 
would scare me you know if i didn't have money coming in and i was relying on people donating and subscribing yeah. and all that sort of stuff like that you'd be very stressed out i think and that would make it would just suck the fun out of it straight away i think you know so yeah and like it, it is a hard graft and like you know you're you're doing so well already that like i totally understand it can be so intimidating can't it like i'd love i'd love to be able to say that this is my full-time job and i'm getting paid yeah. by by universal and i'm getting flown to la and stuff but you know the, the the realistic side of it is that that's not the case but like as you said it's not impossible so no like i definitely mean definitely not. like, look, like look at jack septicai for example like he's probably ireland's biggest youtuber you know yeah I've, I've watched videos of him sitting on a couch with ryan reynolds playing deadpool on the xbox like you know what i mean like so incredible and he's just Incredible. a young lad like from the countryside in ireland like so and like he's one of the biggest youtubers in the world now so you know it, anything is possible and i suppose it can just take one clip i'm probably going to clip out That's loads it. about the, our conversation here throw it up on TikTok. you are free to do the same please do and um, you know you. take whatever take whatever you wish and just chop and chop and screw it and put up whatever you want and again we'll be on spotify and stuff but all it takes is like you know one episode one clip to go viral whatever it is you know so it can do that's just literally it, it nowhere, and like you know, you know i'm i'm still a very small creator in the in the grand scheme of things but like as i said i just went to the cinema one day and i just said i'm gonna i'm gonna review the cinema and i reviewed it and decided to make it a cinema leaderboard and that's what that's why i'm here talking to you if not we 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 never would have crossed paths and that's it yeah. i mean like that's literally all it takes you, yeah. all you got to do is just keep working hard being consistent doing what you love being yourself and then you know the universe will reward you i, I fully yeah. believe in that so definitely keep it up bro because like as i said i know i've said it to you before i do and i, I actually we were talking before and i said i'm in bed very early because i'm a very old man and I, <laughs> I i don't stay up late but i do be lying in bed and i do open my tiktok and, and i do watch you playing fortnite and stuff and it's just yeah it is it is very good and plus you're a very good fortnite player like you are uh. insane by the way <laughs> don't say oh because i've played fortnite for years and i am terrible and i've seen your clips thank and you, you thank blow you. me away so um, <laughs> thank you yeah i, I don't want to come up against you in, in a lobby because i feel like you'd embarrass <laughs> me to bits so no no we wouldn't be going we, if we're playing we're playing together let's just say we're playing duos yeah we're playing yeah duos. exactly Absolutely. exactly um do you have any like kind of movies that you're like really hyped for this year oh yeah i know yeah, I, I again your, your movie wise i get i watched your videos but maybe if you want to just kind of for people who don't listen yeah. or haven't checked I mean, the channel out yet. I mean, Deadpool 3 is the yeah. top of my list. Like, that's probably I think that's the top of the list for the year across yeah, the board. For sure. You know, for even sure. outside, even outside of comic books. I, I, I oh, can't yeah. remember who I, I think it was like an IMDb list that I was looking at for like the top movies of 2024. Deadpool 3 is at the top of the list. Like, so that kind of tells you oh. where 2024 is going. Yeah, mate. Like, I mean, I seen in some posts and it was like 2024 is a filler year for 2025. And yeah. like when you see what's coming out in 2025, it's absolutely stacked. And this year is yeah. still some really great movies. But I mean, I just I constantly am waiting for that Deadpool 3 trailer to drop on on the Super Bowl. I think they're dropping yes. on the 11th. Yeah. I think it's the 11th yeah. of February. Um, and I just think that as we spoke about literally it's such an important moment for yes. the mcu like this this is literally kind of make or break for a lot of people's opinions like if deadpool 3 doesn't come in if deadpool doesn't come into the mcu in a good way then i think it's it's going to be a train wreck but i fully scary. fully believe i know it, it is scary but i do fully believe that they have an absolute banger with hugh jackman in yeah. that comic accurate suit and he uh, he has the cow with the white eyes yeah. that's yeah just beautiful oh yeah, it's, it's beautiful. so good and 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 i mean as as i said earlier on in the in the episode like dune part two is so high up on my list that it's just incredible and um, an underrated one that i'm looking forward to is nosferatu in december and um, now i could be wrong I, I i don't know if it got delayed until 2025 but it's um it's robert eggers i don't know if you've, if you've ever watched uh the northman or the lighthouse i watched um, or northman, the witch yeah. I watched yeah the he's yeah. he's just a badass director and then um, mm. i think it's it's like a i think it's about like uh dracula or something like that so that's okay, kind, yeah. of, kind of kind of a cool movie but um there's there's quite a few that are coming out this year but like those those two i don't really think there's anything else other than deadpool and dune part two yeah. that are that are really grabbing me in terms of something that i'm actually gonna cry yeah just to see and um, <laughs> yeah i could be wrong or maybe i'm missing out on some big ones that are just not in my head but um i mean like they're kind of the biggest two in my eyes and uh, like other things are going to be unexpected bangers to me but 
yeah. those two are the two but dead deadpool takes the cake like that is the yeah. one that you know is going to bring the feels yeah, I, I, to me personally, like, you know, I'm a massive, I've, I've always been a massive Ryan Reynolds fan before he even became Deadpool. And, you know, Deadpool 1 was incredible. Deadpool 2, I didn't like it as much when I first saw it. But then after a couple of rewatches, I was like, okay, yeah, it is a good movie, but it just wasn't as good as the first one. So I, yeah. I was kind of like, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine. But now it's like kind of like after we've lived in a kind of like, kind of four year span of kind of shit movies even coming out from Marvel. You go back and watch something like Deadpool 2 and you're like, oh thank God. It's like there's there is still good stuff to watch. Yeah. But uh I like I'm kind of scared, bro, if I'm gonna be very honest with you, because I've heard again, as I say, my ears to the ground with spoilers and leaks and you know all the yeah. all the behind the scenes stuff. And I know what they've gone through with like the likes of Daredevil, for example. And I know I've I've heard I've seen your videos. I know yeah. you you talk about this stuff too. So you know you know what's going on. But for anybody who doesn't, they basically I think Kevin Feige came onto the set of the show, saw the first six episodes and literally fired all the writers, the directors. Yeah. They're like, you're all gone. We're going back to to basics. Now I think recently it's only come out that they're going to be making a couple of more new episodes, but they're going to actually reuse and repurpose the first five episodes, but they're yeah. shooting a new pilot. So I'm kind of scared because yeah. when I first heard yeah. that they were scrapping the whole lot, I was like, oh, thank God, because I don't know if you know this, but the main the story was that um, Karen and Foggy died off screen and Matt's like not even That's Daredevil stupid. anymore. And it's like he, he wouldn't wasn't even going to put on the suit for the first four episodes. I'm like, oh, this is terrible. I'm like, please don't do this. And then when I heard that, they're, oh, that they got rid of everything, I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. But now that yeah. they're keeping those episodes, I'm kind of scared because I'm like, oh, Jesus, what are they going to do here? But, you know, yeah. rumors only came out this week now that they've rehired the guy who played Bullseye. So I'm like, yes, this is fantastic. And yeah. then obviously we have, if I presume you watched Echo, we have like yeah. Kingpin running for mayor. I'm like, this is brilliant. This is like very comic accurate. This is great. So yeah. I, I think that the MCU have finally kind of learned their lesson. But at the same time, so. with the way that they kind of maybe fucked up Daredevil at the beginning, I'm kind of worried. Did they do some stuff for Deadpool three? Like, did they have? Yeah. Did the dis did Disney dip their hands in Deadpool three? I don't know. I didn't hear any kind of crazy stuff going on in the set that maybe like Ryan wasn't agreeing with or whatever. I think it went pretty smoothly. I know they had to stop for the strikes and stuff, but I think I think that was the only thing that kind of people were a little bit worried about is that when the strike happened, Ryan couldn't improvise on yeah. set, so yes, a big no part of changes. his role. Yeah, so he yeah. kind of had to stick to that and he couldn't he couldn't come around and just like go on set and say the stupidest deadpool line that yeah. would have been a banger and yeah. i feel i hope that ha that doesn't impact it but yeah i think i think daredevil as well like that's another big proven point like if the hardcore netflix fans that see born again and if that doesn't fit into what they know as daredevil Danger zone. it's gonna Danger it, zone. it is it really is and like you know hearing that they've chopped up five episodes and they're shooting a new pilot it is a little bit worrying, but at the same time, you know, Kevin Feige took Iron Man 1 to where we are now. He's done it before. He is, he knows what he's doing. I just think he was very overstretched with everything. If they just focus on quality and yes. they bring it back to, like in Daredevil in particular, if they bring it back to its roots and, you know, now they're, they're bringing back Karen and Foggy and they're scrapping that storyline, new pilot, you know, get him in the suit as soon as possible. People know who he is. You don't need to start from scratch. Yeah. Get the Punisher in there. I seen some rumor yesterday on Twitter that he was only going to be in one episode. And then another leaker said, no, that's not true at all. So um, that's things cool. are flying around there. I, I I think he's going to be in multiple episodes and, and that is good. And as you said, Kingpin running for mayor. Um, and then all of these threads that are leading into Kingpin being the Thanos of the street yeah. level MCU. Yes. Like there's, there's another thing that you need to do. Connect these shows. If you don't want to connect them to the multiverse, connect them to each other on the streets yeah. and kind of yeah. have something that people will come back to. I mean, yeah. it, on paper, it doesn't sound very hard, but I know it, I know it is to make, but I trust Kevin Feige and I trust that he went in there, as you said, seeing the first six episodes said, absolutely not fucking happening. Fire all those people, fix it and get it back to what it it's meant to be. But, you know, yeah. I just going back to Deadpool. I just hope that, um, that yeah that strike didn't impact ryan's performance too much and that disney actually just said here yep yeah, it's deadpool that's we know it's going to be a banger if we just let yeah. them do what they want to do um, and yeah. i think they actually only wrapped today did you see ryan's yeah. ryan's post yeah i so, did yeah um, just a picture of his crotch <laughs> like such a such a wade thing to do <laughs> so funny he's actually he is deadpool like, he is he, deadpool 
Oh yeah, yeah, he is. I can't I can't see him in any other movie other than yeah. Deadpool. Like I just see him as Wade Wilson. Um, if you talk but... about perfect castings, like you know, everyone talks about Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, you know, it, Ryan is up there. Ryan is Deadpool. Like, you know, thousand oh, percent, yeah. It's, and it's, I think it's, it's I think that's what makes it even better with everyone. Like, if you were to ask me that question, and I would say if I was to ask you that question about perfect castings, you'd also say Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Yeah, and to yeah, see them to see them both there together especially like you've got people that were were growing up with Hugh Jackman in the early 2000s as Wolverine to see him back again like in the MCU and and hopefully I mean as far as I know he's going to be in uh, Secret Wars and hopefully the Kang Dynasty so to see him then finally interact with the other the other like MCU characters that that's another big pulling point you know um, and awesome. Yeah, massive. So they like, do they do have a lot of things that they could do right, and they if they get it right, they're on a really smooth sailing course that they're like, right, we've got the trust back from the fans, but they also do have a lot of minds to to try and avoid. But um, yeah. I mean, what can we do other than hope that it turns out to be the movie we want it to be? We have to just sit here and pray, my friend. That's all we can do. <laughs> um, just theorize think, for the next few months. I, I, exactly and uh, that's half the fun for me anyway like i know a lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of people a lot of people don't like the whole spoiler talk and leaks and stuff like that but honestly i love it, I, I love it too i just think it yeah. makes it makes the chase to the project itself to day one so good everyone gets always just yeah. so hyped and it's like did you see the new behind the scenes photo or whatever you know what i mean it just every, you just get hyped and you're living in it for so long literally um, i'm a, I'm a massive Star Wars fan. I don't know how you feel about Star Wars, but for me, like, you know, growing up, it was, you know, the prequel trilogy came out when I was a kid and it was just like, I was following the making of episode two and three. And, you know, I like became obsessed with like Hayden Christensen and stuff like that. So, and like you yeah. McGregor, and I just wanted to like see as much of that, like being made as possible. And that's kind of why I am the way I am today. You know, I just, I, I, I love watching stuff being made i love having that kind of inside track into what's going on behind the scenes and like i'm big Dude, into like it. looking at yeah i'm big into looking at like the box office performances of movies and stuff like and how it's Same. rating and what what what's it how's it doing on imdb like you know all this sort of stuff and like I, 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 some some of my friends look at me like what are you talking about? who cares how much money the movie makes now oh, i'm just like i don't know man i just like, like to me I, that's important <laughs> i love it so much yeah. and like literally kind of alluding to what we talked about earlier i i personally can't wait to sit there for the weekend well it's going to sound very sad to just sit there and watch my screen but to sit there and see how madam webb actually performs like that that yeah. to me is just so intriguing because i'm i'm just so um intrigued to just know how much that movie is going to make and seeing it coming in and then obviously deadpool 3 that road to a billion like will it hit it will it hit it like yeah all of those moments they're so sick man and i love i love all that sort of stuff too it's like it's yeah. great and like that build up to the movie like I mean, yeah, it's cool to just go, hey, do you want to book a ticket to see this this weekend? Yeah, let's go. But that whole build up to to something like we're here, we're talking about Deadpool 3, like who's going to be in it and what are the cameos? And I've seen like, you know, the Fantastic Four car and the Moon Knight ice cream van. It's like, yeah, well, what, what can these mean? Like, what what's going on? And when yeah. is the trailer going to drop? And then analyzing the trailer and yeah. uh, going frame back to what you said about literally and going back to what you said about like wandavision and every week it was like mephisto mephisto the rabbits mephisto <laughs> yeah. the, the cockroach yeah. on the on the yeah. curtains is the mephisto painting on the like, church wall is mephisto literally yeah, it literally so it's fun, just yeah. it's so cool and even if it doesn't turn out that way it's still fun to be able to theorize it and then to come out yeah. and turn to your mate and be like you were bang on a few months ago you had it you had yeah. it sewn up but that yeah. is it's it's one of the coolest things and that's kind of like why I, I love you know i love sitting here talking to you and i love kind of making the videos that um that i do is because you get to actually make a video and go to the comment section and there's so many other yeah. people there that feel the same way as you so like-minded people like it's, yeah it's, yeah. yeah it's nice it's a nice feeling yeah absolutely um I, I know you said you had to go around this time are you good to stay on for a bit or are you um i go? will have to head if that's okay oh, that's fine just, that's all good mine. even even five more minutes but i'd, I'd have to head yeah, right no, before no. Mine. That's all good. That's all good. Look, um, we'll wrap it up, but I'd love to have you on again. I think, you know, we were talking before we went live. We do these live on a Sunday night and, yeah. you know, I would love we'll, to. We'll, try, we'll try and arrange a time, uh, you know, usually on a kind of week to week basis, if there's a new episode of something out or, you know, like say Echo just finished up and, you know, we do a kind of full breakdown of Echo and kind of theorize and discuss where they go from there and so it'd be cool to kind of get you on for one of them so maybe 100%. around around one of the bank holidays when you've got a bit more free time maybe it'll work and then maybe what we might do is if we, if we could try and arrange something around the release of like one of these big movies or something like deadpool 3 for example Dude. you know after we 100%. watch deadpool 3, we, we could sit down and talk about it for two hours you know 
Sign cool. me up. Sign yeah. me up for that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm going to hold you to that because if I don't hear from you, then I'm going to be I'm going to be blocking you. <laughs> you know on where TikTok. we are, bro. You know where we I are. know where you are. I know <laughs> you are. But, no, honestly, but um, yeah, I'd love that uh, next next time, like on a bank holiday or even like sooner or later, whatever. Yeah. Um, I'd love to come on and do and do a live one with you. And uh, literally yeah. anytime, if there's ever a big movie we see or whatever, or there's massive breaking news or whatever hit yeah, me up 100%. i'd love to come on I'd, i literally love it because this has been great and i'm fuming with myself that i have to head now but That's i'd love right. i'd actually love to sit on and talk because i would sit here for another six I, hours and, and chat to you yeah. but, i um, i could easily do three hours here like no problem I, like I, I had a list of stuff here to talk about i didn't even touch on half of it so we'll do <laughs> part <laughs> two is coming. part two yes, yes. part yeah. two <laughs> you gotta Shout get me on soon and um, just before you go do you want to just give yourself give your links a shout out one more time just where people can find you yeah, thank you, dude. And thank you so much for having me. This has been an absolute blast. Um, so it's Sean Talks Movies, um, as it's spelt there on the screen, and yeah. it's pretty sad. The, the, um, the links will be on the YouTube in the description down below as well. So if you're listening, if you're watching on YouTube, the links are all there below. Guys, thank you so much. Have a good one. See you soon. Cheers. Bye.